You know, one of the biggest topics of conversation lately has been the current state of the NRA and how they are basically just a huge dumpster fire. There's nothing positive about the NRA anymore. And I think a lot of people are waking up to that. But a lot of people are saying, well, what do we do? How do we make change? What do we do about this? Do we try to fix it or do we let it burn down? And if we let it burn down, how do we live in a world without the NRA? Well, I don't actually like that second part of the argument there, the how do we live in a world without the NRA? Because we don't have to assume that there's not going to be an NRA no matter what choice we make about whether we fix it or burn it down. Also, I like to think that we could even live in a world without the NRA because there are other organizations that are actually fighting. The NRA hasn't been fighting for decades for us, haven't been making any positive change for a long time. Whereas other organizations like the Second Amendment Foundation, GOA, and even local businesses like Sporting Systems here in town have been rallying people together, gathering money to actually fight the fight. So we still have organizations that would fight for us in the courts where we're actually making a difference if the NRA ceased to exist. But the NRA doesn't have to cease to exist, no matter which choice we make. Now, before I say whether I think we should try to save it or burn it down, let's actually look at the NRA as it is right now. As it is right now, the NRA doesn't even really exist. Most of their social media, which is pretty much your existence nowadays, is owned by Ackerman and McQueen. NRA TV, everything like that, that's Ackerman and McQueen. The NRA has very little. Uh, and they are definitely no longer an organization that's based on protecting its members and their rights. They haven't been that for a long time. We allowed the wrong element to take control. And we allowed them to rot the NRA from within. And I say we allowed it because we did. Uh, even myself, who's been bitching for over a decade now that the NRA is rotting from within, the NRA is rotting from within, and people would tell me, shut up, you traitor. Uh, even those people are coming around now to go, uh, yeah, the NRA has rotted from within. What do we do? Well, there's nothing we can do, really, with the current NRA. We don't have the keys to that anymore. We gave them away. We can't take back something we don't own. We don't own the NRA anymore. The membership have no power. The board has no real power. And the board has been complicit in this all along anyway. Most of them are just there for the perks, the power, and the money anyway. These supposedly unpaid members of the board are enjoying pretty uh, substantial reimbursements on things. And, you know, uh, business contacts, etc., and opportunities that normal people wouldn't get. So they've been complicit in it all along. Or else they'd have been a whole lot more vocal. And they weren't. Uh, that's why people like Adam Kraut and them, that's why I don't trust any of them. Because you weren't really wanting to make change. You knew what the situation was in the NRA. You just want your piece of the pie. So let's just uh, say, don't trust you. I could go a lot further, but I'm just going to say, I don't trust you. And I would never want the NRA falling back into the hands of people like that. A bunch of opportunistic capitalists who just want to go in there and make their money out of it. It won't change if that happens. We just can't turn over some guard and say, well, it's all better now. Not the way it's going to happen. The NRA has rotted from within. There is no structure there anymore that makes it about the members and our rights. We have to accept that. So in this case, uh, there's an old medical term that says sometimes you have to stop the heart to save the patient. An old saying. And that's the case with the NRA right now. We have to stop the heart. We have to let it die. Uh, we have to stand back and watch it burn. Uh, we have to abandon it temporarily. Not forever, because once there's nothing of value there anymore to the people that have rotted it from within, we can take back what is valuable. You know, like if you buy a piece of land and there's no shack on it, it's not the shack that's valuable, it's the land. And you can decide, hey, I want to live here, so I have to decide, is that shack worth fixing? Or is it so rotten that it's better to just burn it down and start again? Would that be quicker, faster, and better? Well, in the case of the NRA, we have to let it burn down and just keep the land, the thing that's valuable. And in the NRA right now, there's only two things of value, period. One is its branding, its trademark, its history. That's what's valuable right now, that recognizable history regardless of what they've done in the last 20, 30 years, what they originally stood for, what they stood for after the revolt in Cincinnati. Which after the revolt in Cincinnati is when we started losing the NRA. Once that happened and they said, 
Screw you guys, you bunch of FUDs who don't want to fight for the Second Amendment. We're fighting for our rights. We're staying right here. We're not moving to Colorado. We're staying right here and we're fighting for our rights. They won the day. That's why it's called the revolt. But immediately the people in power, they didn't wipe enough of them away. So they immediately started making changes to the NRA to make sure that couldn't happen again. They changed the structures of the NRA so much that there's nothing we can do anymore. And this started happening, like I said, right after the, the Cincinnati revolt. But the real nail in the coffin of the NRA, and I know a lot of people aren't going to want to hear this, is Charlton Heston. That's when you can actually tell the day that the NRA died was the day Charlton Heston became the president. And a lot of people aren't going to like that because they like Charlton Heston. But here's the thing. The only reason Charlton Heston became president of the NRA was because People like Wayne LaPierre behind the scenes knew that they were in the midst of another revolt. A bunch of old school pro Second Amendment guys were like, we're taking back the NRA. We're going to start fighting for rights again instead of turning it into an organi a political organization for profit. And they were uh, poised to actually win power back inside the NRA at a time when they were, had, the power hadn't been stripped completely away. They could have maybe made some changes. So Wayne LaPierre and his fellow toadies went, Oh my God, we can't let these people win. What do we do? So they went and they got Charlton Heston, a, a great man who at this time in his life was suffering greatly from mental decline from his Alzheimer's. And they made him their uh, token. They slapped him on the board, said, let's vote for this guy for president because Charlton Heston, he won. And the day he stood up there and said, from my cold dead hands is the day the NRA died. Because while everybody was woohoo and cheering that, Behind the scenes, the people that really wanted to maintain the Second Amendment fight knew they'd lost. And that was when the NRA quit being the NRA. Uh, that little history lesson aside, like I said, there's only some, there are a few things left of value in the NRA. And it's the things that always had the value. Like I said, the first one was the, uh, the branding, etc. The second is the members. So as long as we keep the branding and the members We'll be fine. We can restart the NRA quickly. Uh, it never has to really go away because, like I said, that branding is in people's minds. And people will still know what you're talking about when you say NRA. Even if you say the new NRA, they'll be like, oh, crap, they reorganized or better never. And it'll be about the members again. Now, there's a lot of things we're going to have to do to make it be about the members and make sure this kind of thing doesn't happen again, uh, like a centralized board and leadership in one state that owns and controls everything and therefore profiteers off everything. We can't let that happen again. We can't let people like Adam Kraut, who wanted to be part of the old, uh, the old NRA, be part of the new NRA in any type of leadership position. Uh, now, that's another video of what we can do to save the NRA. But for now, we have to concentrate on the fact that there is no NRA to save at this point, at least not when it comes to the actual day-by-day -day operations of the NRA. What's valuable is that history and the members. So as long as we as members are still here and we still have that roster, and once LaPierre and them have been starved out, we can take back the history, we can take back the branding, and we're still here. We haven't gone anywhere. Once we do that, we can rebuild the NRA stronger than before. And there's got to hardly be a lag between. I mean, they've been selling us out for decades, having six months where they're a little bit inert. And the GOA, the Second Amendment Foundation, and the rest of them have to continue their fights without the NRA. Not going to hurt us that much. Definitely not as much as allowing the corrupt organization to continue like it has been. So I've been rambling here for a long time and back and forth and between topics here. But... Uh, the short answer is, it's not really a matter of letting them go away or trying to fix what's there now. We just have to hold on to what's important. We have to let the rest of it burn down. And then we have to use that foundation, that solid foundation, that land it's built on to rebuild it better than before. And we need to do it quickly. The longer we wait, the less likely that's going to be able to happen. So that's what we need to do. Now, as far as what do we need to do to rebuild the NRA, as a better, more functional, stronger organization? Well, that's a topic for another video because that will take even longer than this took. And I think we all know by now that this has already taken too long. So short answer, yes, we have to let the NRA burn. It is not salvageable. 
but we are not going to let it go away. We are going to smoke out the rats. We're going to smoke out the traitors. And then we're going to walk right back into that burning rubble and we're going to rebuild it better than ever.